Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on installing and configuring networks. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to step through our requirements from CompTIA exam 220-601, section 5.2, where we need to install, configure, optimize, and upgrade networks. Both the 601 exam and 602 exam have similar requirements where we not only need to install and configure network cards and obtain wired and wireless connections, but we also need to make sure we know how to establish network connectivity. So there's a real lot of practical use out of this particular module. And we're going to be going through some demonstrations of how we would see this on our Windows XP desktop. Today, we're going to learn how to install and configure wireless cards, both wired and wireless connections, because there are some differences between how you would configure those technologies. We'll also talk about the things you need to know about configuring the protocols that are going to run over your network. And we'll talk about how to configure client and network options, depending on what scenario you might find yourself in. Let's first talk about getting up and running with installing and configuring your network cards. The first thing we want to check is our hardware configuration. So it's important that we look at our device drivers, that we have the latest device drivers for our card. And sometimes this is a bit complex because one manufacturer of network cards might make three or four different models that are very similar. So make sure that the type of card you have and the drivers that you have match up exactly. And that's very important in, in your Microsoft Windows environment. If there are problems with the driver or things that are, are just not working with the fundamental getting this device up and running, we're going to see problems there in our device manager. So make sure you're comfortable using the device manager. You may want to go back and look at one of our previous videos where we talk about getting into the device manager, updating, configuring, and looking at the way the drivers are loaded. These drivers are extremely critical. I really can't say this enough at the physical level. If you have the bad drivers, everything else you're going to do is really just not even going to be worth it. You need to make sure the drivers you have work. Don't just assume that the latest drivers that you have are also the greatest. Occasionally, a driver version that's one back may be better than the driver versions you're using today. So if you get into driver problems and you're trying to troubleshoot, that may be a good thing to try is backtracking to a previous rev and see if you still have the problems. If our device is installed, our drivers are loaded, and we don't have any problems at our device driver level, then we can feel pretty good in our device manager that things are set up just fine. Now it's up to us to make sure that we configure everything properly on our network card. Some very common options on wired networks is the speed of the card and the duplex of the card. And what's important about that is they have to match the speed and the duplex on the other side of the connection. So we need to have a look at those and make sure that what we see in our configuration matches all the way around. Let's look at my hardware configuration. We're going to go to Start and our Settings in the Control Panel. And we're going to assume here that we've already been in the Device Manager, and we've looked at the configuration of the drivers. And we know that it says the drivers have loaded properly. So we can feel pretty good that the adapter card itself is working properly. If I'd like to see how the card is configured, I'm going to see that in my Network Connections option. The Network Connections is going to show us all of the different adapters that might be installed on this machine. In this particular computer, there's only a single adapter. And if I right mouse click, I can choose Disable. I can get the status of the card. I can do a lot of different things. Or I can click Properties. Properties is going to bring us up to a screen that allows us to go into the configuration of the adapter card. And that's exactly where I want to start. Before I go to Protocols, before I look at Addressing, let's just make sure at a physical, fundamental layer that we've got our configuration right. All the configurations are in the Advanced tab. Depending on the card you have, there may be different settings here and different options and different selections. But for our card, we can do a lot of different things. Generally, the defaults are pretty good. Unless you know what you're changing, you may not want to alter a lot of these because some have maximum and minimum segment size, segment counts, network addresses, TCP offloading. So don't make a big change to these as just trying to guess. Make sure you understand what you're doing prior to doing anything like that. Making a change, for instance, to 802.1p tagging might have a dramatic impact on your ability to communicate on the network. I wanted to talk about speed and about duplex. And there is a duplex setting here that allows me to turn on and off duplex, make it half duplex, make it full duplex, and decide how I want to change things here. Notice that a lot of these options here are set to automatically detect or to use the defaults on the card. So you can go in here and make changes to any of these things to understand exactly here's the speed, for instance. If I want to make sure I'm running at 100 megabit full or 100 megabit half or 10 megabit full or 10 megabit half, this is how I would configure some of these settings. 
So the idea is that we can look at this and go with auto, and if both sides are set to auto or one side is set to auto, it should pick up what the other side is doing. Unfortunately, auto detect doesn't necessarily always work that way. And it becomes more of a philosophical conversation. Some people hard code everything, and they make sure that everything is hard coded to 100 megabit full duplex. Other people say automatic works, and we're just going to run automatically. If we run into problems, we'll deal with those in more of a one-off scenario. So it's up to how you want to do it, but just make sure you understand this is where you go to make those changes. At the physical level, wireless connections tend to have a lot more options available to them. That's because this isn't just plugging in a wire and making sure things work. There's a lot of other things that you can do over a wireless connection. So one of the first things you'll see is the connectivity mode that you're going to be requested to have. And you'll see two terms, an ad hoc mode and an infrastructure mode. Now, if you're not familiar with wireless, those neither of those makes any sense whatsoever, does it? The ad hoc mode is really designed for two devices to communicate to each other without using an access point in between. It's more of a peer-to-peer -peer or device-to-device -device communication. Generally, in, a, in almost any environment, you don't find yourself using ad hoc mode very often. Almost everybody uses infrastructure mode because everybody has a centralized access point that they'll connect to. So if you have a, a wireless router in your environment, you are using infrastructure mode to do that. In very large or even small organizations, you're at a coffee shop and you're using the hotspot. It is this infrastructure mode that you happen to be connected to. Once you're on the network, there are a number of things that you have to have to be able to really get in and use it. So first thing is you have to know the SSID, which stands for Service Set Identifier. And what that is is a list of the wireless networks. It's what you name the wireless network. So the wireless network might be called Wireless One. It might be called Hotspot. It may be the name of a hotel that you happen to be in or the name of the coffee shop that you're in. And you'll know, oh, that's the wireless network that corresponds to where I happen to be sitting right now. There's also some security pieces set up on your router or your, or your access point called Mac layer filtering. We'll talk more about wireless security in a wireless networking piece. But Mac layer filtering really gets into understanding what devices do you want to have access to this network. And generally, that's something that is administered by the person who owns or operates the access point. If it's in a public access point, there usually isn't any filtering. Everybody has access to it. Now, the next two pieces for WEP, which stands for Wired Equivalent Privacy, and WPA, or WPA2, which stands for Wi-Fi Protected Access, those are methods of encryption. And an access point generally is supporting one of those types. So you'll be prompted when you first connect to the access point. It will probably tell you there's security on this access point. You need to provide me with the password. And that password is going to be provided to you by the administrator of that access point. On my local workstation, I configure my wireless connections the same way I would configure my wired connection. So you can see on this particular computer, I've got a FireWire connection, an IEEE 1394 connection. I've got an internal Ethernet connection that on this particular machine isn't even plugged in. And there is a wireless connection that's connected right now. If I right mouse click and choose Properties, it brings me up to a network connection properties that looks very similar to a wired connection. The differences are going to be in the configure option for the card itself. This happens to be an Intel card, a 3945 ABG card. It's a pretty capable card. And you can see a lot of the different options that are in here for configuring this card. For instance, ad hoc modes would need a channel, a power management, and a quality of service mode. You have a mixed mode configuration, roaming aggressiveness. So you're starting to see things for power, for wireless modes. And this becomes very, very important because if this isn't set to automatic, then we need to tell our card that's in our machine, use this mode. For instance, a wireless mode in use will use 802.11a, b, and g. You can also say just use G, just use A, just use B. Got a lot of different options here. Or use a different settings of those. The default is to use everything, for instance. The amount of power that will be used. If you are on a laptop and you're in a local access point, you may want to turn the power down for your card so it will conserve battery but still allow you to access the access point that happens to be local to where you are. You've also got options here for configurations of what you're plugging into. And when you start configuring the SSIDs and the configurations, those are done in the wireless setups. Let's have a look at those. 
you'll notice on a wireless connection where we're looking at the hardware, the properties of the card, we have a different option if it's a wireless card. There's a Wireless Networks tab. And from here, this is where you would configure the access points you're connecting to, what security is configured for those access points. We can view available wireless networks from here, or we can look at the properties of a wireless network that we might already be connected to. And now we're starting to see some of those things we were discussing, the SSID. We can look at network authentication methods, the data encryption type that's configured for those. We can look at the key that's being used that we have to type in for our security purposes. And here's the challenge for you as a CompTIA professional. Each one of these has to match up. We have to make sure it matches what's on the access point. If any one of these happens to be off, there's probably a good case that we're not going to be able to communicate, get an IP address, and be able to use that wireless link. Once you've got it, you've got it. So if you're working, then you know that everything you put in there is correct. If any one of these is off, you aren't going to have the connectivity you need. You're not going to get the connection link, and you're not going to get IP addressing. So make sure that you sync up on both sides. If you don't have a way to see what's in the access point, you may be in a situation where you're forced to try a lot of different things until you find the right combination. But it's in there. You just have to keep working with it until you figure out exactly the way it's configured on both sides. Configuring protocols on the network these days is done from a centralized point. Generally, it's your router that's configured to provide you with a lot of information automatically. So you don't have to manually add IP addresses anymore. But you may be in a situation where you'd like to. You may be setting up a local network. And if you do that, you're going to need to know this information to configure for your TCP IP protocols. You'll need an IP address. You'll need a subnet mask. You'll need a gateway. And you'll need a DNS if you want to communicate out over the internet. Now, these four addresses become extremely important when you're setting up TCP IP. But you may be asked to also set up other types of protocols as well. If you're on a Microsoft environment, you may be setting up a WINS address, a Windows Internet Name Service address. These days, the DNS and the WINS tend to do similar things. And very often, it's even the same device, and it's used similarly. But these are some of the types of protocols that you'll see and that you're expected to know for your CompTIA exam. If you wanted to add some of the addressing yourself, you can go into even your wireless connection and look at your properties. All of your IP address information, if I scroll down to TCP IP, is in here. And as I mentioned, almost everything these days is done automatically. But you could choose here the radio button that allows you to manually add those addresses. And it would put those pieces in there. There's even a separate option here that allows you to set under the advanced option under WINS, you can add WINS connections, WINS servers as well. Now, if you just wanted to see what was happening right now, I'm going to cancel out of my properties. If we right mouse click and we choose the status of this device, there is a Support tab that tells us this address was assigned automatically by our dynamic assignment methods. It's got IP addresses, subnet masks, and gateways. There's even a Details button that shows me a lot more about what's configured for this link. So you don't have to pop out to your DOS prompt to see all of these things, although you could run the IP config command. A lot of this is already in your user interface. So this helps you understand, did I receive an IP address on my wireless link? If so, what IP address is this? Can I ping my default gateway? And you could do some basic troubleshooting from here. Now, once we've got an IP address and we're connected to the network, that doesn't necessarily mean that we've completely configured our client. If you're running some specialized servers in your environment, such as those from Microsoft or from Novell, you may need to load an extra set of clients that allows you then to communicate to those Microsoft servers or to those Netware servers. TCP IP in itself doesn't know anything about Microsoft. It doesn't know anything about how to use Netware servers. So you have to make sure those clients are loaded. If this is a Microsoft environment, it's also going to be important that you know what work group is in use at this environment or which domain you're going to need to connect to. And very often, you'll, get, you'll have to have authentication to be able to log into that domain or add this machine to that domain. To look at our client configuration, we can right mouse click on a network card and choose Properties. And we're looking here where it says, this connection uses the following items. And everything underneath here will be optional pieces that have been loaded on to this network card. One of the drivers on this machine is a client from Microsoft Networks that allows us to log in and use Microsoft Network configurations. We've also got a file and printer sharing from Microsoft Networks driver here. So if I need to share files or I need to print to a printer that understands the Microsoft networking scheme, then I'm going to need this client here so that myself and the printer can communicate properly. Any type of client that's going to be loaded 
listed on your network card is going to show up in this list. This is a great centralized place to go to see if somebody's got the right drivers loaded, if those drivers are enabled or have a check mark next to them. So if somebody's not printing, that's one of the places we can go to see if the file and printer sharing is loaded and if it's enabled. The basic installation and configuration of a client and workstation to use the network pretty cut and dry. We've gone through the installation and configuration of network cards, both the wired configuration and the wireless piece. We've looked at protocol configuration and the different options available for those. And finally, we configured some client configurations, some network options. We went in to see exactly the way we would use to communicate to Microsoft servers and Microsoft printers and how we can change and modify those in our networking configuration. For more free a videos, to participate in our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com. <laughs>